one of our uh, subscribers asked, um, I'd like for you to share your thought press process for deciding on exactly what colors you're going to use in a painting, assuming that you choose your colors before you start to paint. I think I've got just the thing for you there. This quick tip is really timely because we just launched onto our website a new course called Cracking the Color Code. It has everything you need in there about helping you to always make the right decisions for finding just the colors you want. Let's give you just a little bit of a hint here to get you going. Now, for one thing, a lot of things, a lot of times, artists don't, real, painters don't realize that it's important for you to be able to recognize color according to the color name. We're used to calling colors by their tube names, ultramarine, blue, lizard, crimson, uh, cadmium, yellow, that sort of thing. Well, that cannot be very helpful to you when you're trying to figure out nuanced color. So, for one thing, let's start with the three parts of color. What are the three parts of color? And each color has a hue. That's the color name, yellow yellow green, green, yellow orange, orange, and so on. Each color has a value. Now that value is determined by where, wherever the color is located. So that value could be anything from the lightest light to the darkest dark. And each color has an intensity. Now, or people also call it chroma. I say intensity because that's what I've always called it all my life. That means the degree to which it's fully saturated or neutralized. So that would be fully saturated to degrees of then becoming more and more neutral. And that's the one that usually trips people. So we're not going to try to teach you all of that in this quick tip. But I want to show you just some clues to get you going on how you select the colors. This is the question the viewer asked me. How to select the colors that you put on your palette before you get started. Now, here we go. If I were doing a painting of this scene, I would look at this. And first of all, I would say, what color, what color pops out at me first? Or which color is more dominant? So I could begin with the green, or I begin with blue, or I could begin anywhere to begin to set up the palette. It wouldn't make that much difference. But let's say the green pops out first. Now, what kind of green is it? And that's where we go to the color wheel. Because if you know... What kind of green you're looking at when you first start, you'll know what kind of color to choose, uh, what tube to choose for your colors. So let's do this. Um, so a green can go from blue-green all the way over to yellow-green. And sometimes in foliage like this, we're going to see all those greens. We'll see yellow-greens, we'll see just regular greens we'll see, blue greens, we'll see variations of them, we'll see them in varying values, we'll see them in very, uh, varying intensities. But just for the hue, if, if you're calling that sap green to yourself, then that limits the way you think about it. So learn, first of all, to call the color you're looking at by its name. Now I'm seeing more yellow green right now than I am another color. And you can see, I put the color wheel right here on yellow green, and I pull it around like that on yellow green. You can see all that yellow green popping out. All right, I see some blue green too, but let's just start with yellow green. Start with one. Now, I know that sap green is a good yellow green. So what would I want to do next? I would reach for sap green because it is a good yellow green. Now, here is sap green in its darkest form on the palette. Here is sap green on... Uh, on the canvas. You can see it's a, it's a very, very dark green. So then I would need to be able to create a wide value range of that yellow green. So to create that wide value range, I could go to either a yellow because it's yellow green, or I could go to white. So if I go to yellow, or if I, oh, let's just go to white first of all. I'll go to white and just see sort of what, uh, what that will give us here. Um, and see, now I begin to get a lighter version of that yellow green. I can add, uh, I can add yellow back into it. And I'll just add some yellow orange back in. I can add yellow back into it. And then it would give me a, a, more, a, a more vibrant yellow green. So, so we can put this right here. 
and that's a different value of yellow green. Now I'm not going to go through the whole process, but the idea is once you find a hue, then find the ability or develop the ability, find the ability on your palette to have the full range of that hue. So full value range of that hue. So if yellow green starts out at the darkest green, then you want the ability on your palette to make it the lightest light. That means white. So white goes on your palette. That means adding uh, yellow back to it because when you add white, it's going to get a little duller. So that means either a cadmium yellow or a cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow, or even you could use the cadmium yellow deep, which is more of the yellow orange. So you see the thinking process there. You put the colors out as you need them. So, all right, so then that, there's one other thing you need, or actually two other things that you would need there. One is you would need the ability to neutralize that yellow green. So what do we know about how to neutralize colors? If we know that the complement, and yes, it does work like this on the traditional color wheel. I don't care what theories you've heard on YouTube, this works. With pigments, this works. So with the, the complement of yellow green is red violet. We have a red violet called quinacridone violet. And that goes directly to the source of a red violet. So we could put the quinacridone violet out on the palette. That's a very dark. So we have the ability to make it very dark. We have the ability to make it light. So we have white on the palette. Um, and so I'm going to do just a little bit of that right here just to show you. Now we have the ability to neutralize yellow green. So we will just put a little bit of that. I'll just do it with the palette knife. Okay, here is the red violet. You see how very dark that is? When I add a little bit of white to it, and this gives you more of the hue, this is more of the real hue that you're reading. And if I adjust a touch of that into the yellow green, we will see how it has the ability to neutralize the yellow green. I'll just bring that in a little bit of white in that so that you can read it a little bit better. You can see on the palette, see how that's turning neutral? It's tur turning neutral means that it's, it's leaning more towards gray. Now put those two together and there's the neutral version. So now we have on the palette, we've made selections, we have the yellow green. We're just going, this, going uh, methodically like this. We have the yellow green. We have the ability to lighten it to make it warmer with the, with the uh, yellow. And we have the red violet. So now we almost have everything we need. We would need also the ability to create that blue-green that we're looking at. In other words, we need the ability to make it cooler. So how can we make it cooler? Well, you could, put a, you could choose a blue-green. But there's another way that you can make it cooler, and that is to add ultramarine blue to it. So if we take the yellow-green, I'll just pull some right over here. I see it's very dark, so you can't really see. But I'm going to mix some of the blue green, uh, ultramarine blue into that. And then show you here. Here is the blue green, but you can't see because it's so dark. So I'll add just a little bit of the white to the blue green so that you can see the difference between the green. So here we go. Now you can see how that is bluer. If I, well, actually, if I hold see if I hold the color wheel up here, you see how it's more attention, more attentive, more akin to blue green, whereas up here is more akin to yellow green. So you'll get a wider or broader range if you add the add another color here that can be mixed with this to make it cooler and also as it gets deeper in the shadow to make it cooler. All right. Now, so now what we have on the palette. We have blue, we have the ultramarine blue for the blue, blue as we're reading here. We have the, the uh, yellow green, the ability to make it blue green, the ability with the uh, red violet, red violet here to neutralize it. What else do we need on that palette? All right, when we're looking now, we have the yellow greens covered. With the blue bird, we have already here with ultramarine blue, we have already a blue that is going to give us that. But, again, we look at that. That's not just blue. That is a greenish blue. Now, we, you could put a phthalo blue on the palette. You could, there are other blues that tend towards a greenish blue. 
but we already have the ability here to do that and that would simply be do just the opposite of what we did here take ultramarine blue and let's put ultramarine blue up here so that you can see it by itself right here ultramarine blue add a little bit of white to that so that you can see its hue that means a little bit more actually the ultramarine blue means a little bit more towards blue violet you can see that right here now Let's add just a little bit of green to that, and uh, the sap green to that, and see now if that doesn't give us what we need. I'll just put it right here. Oh, why not just put it right here? All right, let's see now if that's not close enough or in the neighborhood to give us what we need to make that blue-green. A little bit more white there. There we go, right there. Now... If I take a little bit of that and hold it right over here, you can see. If I add a little bit more of the light to it, or add, a, I, I, in fact, I could add a little bit of the yellow. We already have the yellow on the palette. We could add a little bit more of the yellow into that and get it even, change it a little bit more. See right here. Let's get that just a little bit more changed. A little bit more yellow right there. Change it with the blue just a little bit more right here. And we will put a little bit of white in it. Now all this little process is simply to show you you don't need a thousand colors on your palette. All you need are the, the capabilities to mix whatever your eyes see. Now we've got it right there. So you can manipulate that yellow green. Uh, you can manipulate that blue by adding to it either the yellow green or the yellow and the white and you can end up with the colors you need here now the only other thing you need now is the ability to neutralize the blue so we've gone through the major colors we see a neutral color here and that uh, that too will give us if we neutralize the blue to give us a neutral color uh, with this neutral here we should be able to get that so to neutralize the blue let's look at here look here at the blue Blue leans a little bit more towards green, so we need an orange right here that leans a little bit more towards red. And a good one for that would be the Quinacridone Burnt Orange. We already have that on the palette here for convenience. So I'll put this Quinacridone Burnt Orange right here. You can see if I put it's a it's a uh, very dark, and it it's a it's already a little bit neutralized. Uh, and now we can see if we add add the ultramarine blue to that I just let you see it right here if I add the ultramarine blue to that you can watch it neutralize there we go get that a little bit get a little bit more of the um, ultramarine uh, the uh, quinacridone burnt orange into that you can watch it right here watch it neutralize right there and I get a little bit of white to that right in here now there gives us that gives us the neutral so what do we have here that gives us a neutral that could very well serve not only to give us the neutrals we see here in the white but also let's make it just a little bit bluer a little bit bluer because it's a little bit cooler there also to give us the neutrals that we're seeing there in that log so you see you have all that capability there now in the color course called cracking the color code uh, i go into these things in specific in specifics with you and have you to do exercises where you can then have command and in any color you see uh any color you see in a scene you'll you'll be able to then set a palette for that color that is actually a limited palette see i only have what well, we have four colors here count the yellow five and plus white. If you wanted to count this, that'd be six, but that would be the most colors that you would need um, in order to do a scene like that. You see little accidental things like the yellow orange. Well, you can get the yellow orange easily uh, with the quinacridone, uh, with quin quinacridone, <laughs> quinacridone violet and and the yellow, or simply by using the yellow orange here. We don't need, even need the yellow orange on there. We could do it simply uh, easily with just adding the yellow. The yellow. So the uh, uh, the best way to get a a uh, painting from a scene like this that has 
harmonious colors is to come up with a limited palette um, with which that has built into it the capability to find any color you want. The way you do that is to start out with the color wheel, naming the colors by their hue name in order to be able to think through, and this is what the, the uh, person asked about, in order to be able to think through how you would make selections for the colors that go in the palette. So uh, go over to dianemice.com and check out the um, Cracking the Color Code course and see if that's not something that might help you even further in setting up or making decisions about colors for your palette. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dyingmize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.